Subdivision surface. A method of representing a smooth surface via the specification of a coarser, piecewise, linear polygon mesh. A polygon mesh that has been divided into more faces while retaining the object's general shape. It's not as complicated as it sounds, so if you keep watching the tutorial, I'm going to try to explain. Most 3D software can create subdivision surfaces. Blender and 3ds Max uses modifiers. Other programs like Maya does not. So what is subdivision surface or subsurf, which is a shorter term frequently used? It is a way to smooth out corners and edges and to allow for complex smooth modeling on a simple mesh. It can be used to add geometry to a mesh, but most of the time it is used for the smoothing effect. Here is a mesh affected by the subsurf modifier. You can see it has rounded edges and corners. But if I turn the modifier off or remove it completely, you can see that the original mesh was actually a cube. Here you can see another mesh where the origin, original mesh was sharp, had sharp corners and edges which is represented as the yellow figure and you can see the gray part inside which is now the new mesh after adding a subsurf modifier and you can see it does not follow the same shape as the original one it is much smoother so how how does it do this how does it work blender uses advanced mathematical algorithms to produce the effect but that's not all because everybody knows that if you want to change the shape of an object in blender you need geometry at the places you want to change and that is actually what the modifier does it adds virtual geometry and that means the geometry is there affecting the mesh but you can't select it and i'm going to show you because this cube which now has the appearance of a more of a sphere like the one before is actually affected by the subsurf and if i go into wireframe you can now see the virtual geometry around the model and when i say you can't select it i'm going to go into edit mode to show you and like you see you cannot you cannot select it what you can select, however, is the, the uh, geometry of the original mesh. That's why you can say that the original mesh becomes the control cage. As you can see, when I move this around, I can pull it down here, I can pull this in a little bit, and you can see that it's actually affecting the mesh. So that's how you control a subdivision surface modifier, by using the original mesh. In the end, if you want to, you can apply the subdivision modifier and have the, uh, the geometry permanently added to the object. And I'm going to show you now how to do that. You press apply and if I go into edit mode now, you can see that now the geometry is actually on the mesh. So that's how the modifier works so now that you have been seeing what the uh, modifier does to mesh you might be thinking what if i want more of the original shape on the object there is a few ways to do that and i'm going to show you one of them so if i go into edit mode and let's say i want the angle here to be a little bit more like the original mesh I can add an edge loop, Control R, and drag it up, and you can immediately see that the angle gets sharper. If I pull it down, you can see it stretches the mesh out and produces a much smoother curve. So let me pull it up here, and let me add one on the other side. You can see that the angle here is now much more similar to the original original mesh and if i want a thicker mesh on the sides here i can also add an edge loop here around the whole object 
if I pull this up, uh, I take one, I pull it down. You can see that we have now got much of the uh, thickness back. So this is one way to do that. But I'm planning to do another tutorial, which is actually going to be the part two of this one. Uh, I'm going to go deeper into how you actually do that. All right, let let's take a look at the modifier. You can find it here in the symbol of a wrench. If you press that, you can go to add modifier and find subdivision surface from the list. What this first button does is just to hide slash unhide the modifier. It's useful if you have many modifiers in the stack and you need to free up some space. Here you have at least a little part of the name of the modifier. Can be useful in the same situation as this. You have many modifiers and you need to locate one specific. This button, what it does is that it disables uh, the modifier during render. If you press it in, now it's grayed out and that means it's, uh, it's disabled and if you press it in, it is enabled. So let's press F12 and you can see now it renders with the uh, modifier on. If I press this in, disable it, press F12, you can now see it renders without the modifier. Okay, we're gonna turn it off again. When you press this button, what will happen is that you will disable the modifier in the viewport. This is the viewport, the one we're looking at. And if you disable this, it doesn't matter what mode you're in, it'll be gone because we have disabled it in the viewport. So let's turn it off again. It is useful when uh, your subdivision surface is hiding geometry that you need to select. You can turn it off, select it, and do what you want to do with it. Let's go into object mode. This button is kind of interesting because it does the same thing, but only in edit mode. So you can see I can press it as much as I want and nothing happens because we're in object mode. If I go into edit mode, now we can see we turn it off. So it works only in edit mode. And we're going to stay in uh, edit mode because this next button here, what this actually does is uh, very interesting. You might have seen from tutorials, uh, others, models, that you're not getting kind of the same nice topology as other modelers do, other artists do. And that might be because you have this disabled. What it does is it adjusts the control cage, which we were talking about earlier, the edit cage, to the modify result. So if I press this, now it's enabled and you can see the edit cage is adjusted to the modify result. That's quite interesting. I usually, when I'm, when I'm working with subdivision surface and I'm trying to change the geometry, then I like to have it off, turned off. What these two buttons does is to change the position in the modifier stack. So I'm gonna add a few modifiers just to show you. Uh, let's add a bevel <coughs> and turn that off. So if I press the down arrow, you can see now we move the subdivision surface one position down. If I add it again, <coughs> you can see we move it even further. The reason you might want to do this is because your modifier's position in the modifier stack might cause that very modifier to be affected by one of the other modifiers. And that can produce undesired effects to your mesh. That's why we can change it if uh, 
something like that happens. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in part 2 of this tutorial. Here is the apply button and you want to use this if you want the modifier applied to the object. And like I showed you earlier, when you apply it, you apply the the virtual geometry to the object and you can use it when you've done that. But the only time you want to apply the modifier is when you need the the extra geometry that this gives the object, then you can apply it. If you're just using the modifier to get this nice smoothing effect, then don't apply it. If you press this button, you will just copy the modifier and get another modifier of the same kind. And you can see how smooth this makes the, <laughs> the object. It's not many situations where you actually need to do this. Here is the type of subdivision modifier. The Catmull Clark is the one we're using now. And this is the one that gives the smooth effect to the object. Simple can be used when you just want to add geometry to a mesh. And you can see we're not having the uh, smooth effect now anymore. So let's turn it back on again. In uh, these two sliders, you can adjust how many subdivisions you want in the viewport with this here. We can see it change when I use this. Here you can uh, change it when you render. If you want to have more subdivisions when you render than you have in the viewport, you can do that here. Or the opposite way. One of the reasons you might want to have different uh, amount of subdivisions when you render and when you don't render is because having too many subdivisions might cause Blender to run sluggish. Um, you might want to turn it down so that it gets easier to work. If this uh, box is ticked, then it means the subdivision service modifier will subdivide the UVs as well. Just so that you know it. Uh, These two other here, you don't need to care about this as long as you're a beginner. But if you're hellbent on getting all the information, then you can go to the Blender, uh, the Blender uh, documentation. The uh, yeah, how can I forget that? The uh, manual and read about it. There is one thing I should mention before I close this tutorial. A subdivision surface is normally used with smooth shading because if you watch carefully you can see that we still have uh, it's not entirely smooth that's because we haven't set the shading to smooth now you can see it's much better so you always want to use smooth shading with the subdivision surface modifier at least if you're using it to get the smoothing effect so that's it for today everyone please uh, like and subscribe and we'll see each other in the next tutorial bye bye